You're watching Ruroni K95's movie review on Silver Bullet. Hi Ruronis, this is your pal Ruroni K95 here, and once again I decided to cover another 80s movie which is under the which to cover uh, is a particular movie which is based on the novel by Stephen King for today's movie review is Silver Bullet. Silver Bullet is a 1985 American horror film based on the 1983 Stephen King novella, Cycle of the Werewolf. It stars Corey Haim, who is from The Lost Boys, as well. We'll get to that in just a moment. Gary Busey, Everett McGill, Megan Follows, Terry, Mc... Terry O'Quinn, Lawrence Tyranny, Bill Simitrovic, Kent Broadhurst, David Hart, and J. Ames Gammon. The film is directed by Dave Ann Attias and written by Stephen King and produced by Dino De Lartinis. The film is now considered a cult classic. This movie was released on October 11, 1985, especially for the movie Silver Bullet. So let's do a, a review on the movie Silver Bullet. Let's begin. Jane Kloss, Coleslaw serves as a narrator of the film, as well as the older sister of the main protagonist of the movie. Her paraplegic brother, Marty, their rocky relationship changes after a series of murders in their small rural town of Tarker's Mills, Maine, starting in the spring of 1976. Yeah. Railroad road worker Arnie is... De Decapitated by an unseen attacker, pregnant Stella prepares to attack herself, but is brutally murdered in her own bedroom. An abusive father is killed in his greenhouse. Marty's best friend, Brady, is also killed after Brady's death. Citizens from a form a vigilante justice group. Although local sheriff Joe Holler attempts to stop the citizens, he relents after being berated by Brady's father. Reverend Lowe fails to dissuade the townsfolk from causing further bloodshed. While the vigilantes hunt for the killer in the nearby woods, three are attacked and killed. The survivors later deny seeing anything unusual. Afterwards, Reverend Lowe dreams that he is presiding over a mass funeral when his congregation, including the bodies in the casket, it begin to transform begins to transform into werewolves before his eyes and attack him he awakens screaming and asks god to let it let it end because he would find out it was just a nightmare and the process what you see in silver bullet as a result of the mounting unsolved murderers curf curfews are put in place canceling the towns for fourth of july celebration Cost laws decide to have their own backyard party and invite Nan's alcoholic brother, Red. Red gives the gift of a custom-built wheelchair motor motorcycle to Marty when he nicknames the Silver Bullet, as well as a pile of fireworks so he can ha have his own celebration. Marty uses the Silver Bullet to go out in the middle of the night to a bridge where he lights the fireworks. The fireworks get the werewolf wolf's attention and it confronts him but he escapes after launching a rocket into the creature's eye marty enlists jane hinton's help to look for someone with a newly injured or missing eye she discovers that reverend low is missing his left eye realizing that n no adult would believe his story marty begins sending anonymous notes to Reverend Lowe telling him that he knows who he is, what he is, and that he should commit suicide in order to stop the killings. Lowe tries to run Marty off the road with his car when Marty is trapped under a closed, recovered bridge. Lowe, whose sanity has been fractured by his condition, tries to real rationalize the murders he has committed as doing God's work. Lowe apologizes and moves in for the kill until Marty calls for help from a passerby, especially. The siblings manages to convince Red that Lowe is connected to the murders and attempt to kill Marty. Red persuades Sheriff Holler to investigate that night. Holler still kept skeptical, but desperate to find the killer. And, and then... 
goes to Lowe's house and finds Lowe has locked himself in his garage to restrain himself from further killings. Before Holler can arrest him, Lowe transforms and blood Ugens Holler to death. Knowing the werewolf is coming for them next, Marty and Jane convince Red to take Jane's silver cross and Marty's silver medallion to the gunsmith, who melts them down to a sil into a silver bullet. On the night of a full moon, they wait for the werewolf, who cuts the power to the house and smashes its way inside, attacking Red. The bullet is nearly lost in the may in the melee, in the which is probably in the process. But Marty is able to retrieve it and shoots the werewolf in the right eye. The corpse turns back into low before dying as the trio recover. Marty and Jane say that they love each other and embrace, and Jane narrates that although she hadn't always been able to say it. As you know. She, she was able to say it from then on, if you noticed, if you will. And that's my review on the movie Silver Bullet. Filming began in October 1984. It took about two and a half months to complete, finishing shortly before Christmas. However, in the novella, the werewolf has set, was said to snarl in nearly human words, and the werewolf so, was supposed to speak in the original screenplay, although it was eliminated after a rewrite. Gary Busey, who is in TV shows that he was known for, like Walker, Texas Ranger, Law & Order, Scrubs, Impractical Jokers, Gunsmoke, and Entourage, The Ginger Dead Man... Quigley, Lost Highway, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Carried Away, Point Break, Predator 2, and he was also in the Lethal Weapon movie he, as well. As same with Corey Haim, who is known for the movie, which we know, we, I'm certainly, we all know that Corey Haim is known for Sam Emerson in The Lost Boys, which I've already did my previous movie review on The Lost Boys. I mean, Silver Bullet is basically one of those 80s werewolf movies right next to American Werewolf in London and The Howling, which is particularly for that. Now, if this was The Howling or American Werewolf in London, then I would have basically compelled for another movie review, but we'll get to that in, at good time for the at one point. But it's Silver Bullet because it's based on the novella Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King. As well, Gary Busey felt a ki certain ki kinship with the Uncle Red character, and was allowed to ad lib all of his lines in certain takes of each scene in which he appeared. Although he read the lines and scripted in most of the takes, Stephen King and Daniel Atez liked the ad lib scenes better and decided to include most of Gary Busey's ad lib scenes in the final cut of the film. King asked for the werewolf to be plain and hard to see in contrast to the hulking monsters seen in other werewolf movies, films, and books in the early to mid-1980s, with the result of being a creature which looked more like a black bear than anything else and did not have really have any identifying characteristics. After seeing Carlo Rimbaldi's design, as you noticed, per Stephen King's request, producer Dino De Laurentiis was very unhappy and demanded unchanged, with which both King and Rimbaldi refused. Eventually, pre-production fell behind schedule, and director Don Arsacelli, who is known for his work like Bubba Hotep, with Bruce Campbell and the Beastmaster, and he's also famous for the Phantasm movie series as well, which you would notice. I guess in the same way how in The Incredible Hulk, the first Part 2 episode where Delphi's evil-looking Hulk creature was played by Dick Durock, who is, a, who is, from, who is the, the Swamp Thing in, from the 1982 Wes Craven's movie of the same name. As well, but anyways, Don Car 
Our Casa Corelli he opted to start filming the non-werewolf scenes with knowing that, without knowing what would happen with the werewolf suit. Yeah. After completing the non-werewolf scenes and not having a clear picture about what happened with the film, Costa Carell resigned as a director and was replaced with Atias when pressure to either cancel the film or accept the design. De Laurentiis relented and allowed filming to continue. With Rambaldi's werewolf suit, a modern dance actor was hired to perform the stunts inside the suit. But when De Laurentiis was also unhappy with his performance and demanded a change, as a result, Everett McGill, who played Reverend Lester Lowe in human form, would wound up acting out most of the scenes in the werewolf suit, and was credited with a dual role. Silver Bullet was released theatrically in the United States by Paramount Pictures in on October 1985. It grossed about twelve thousand and three hundred sixty. One thousand eight hundred sixty-six hundred dollars at the box office. The film received mixed reviews from critics. It holds up at forty-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes on twenty ba based on twenty reviews. Film critic Roger Ebert gave the film three out of four, three stars out of four. Ebert admitted that he thought that the film was a parody of the novella and of King's work, Stephen King's works in general. But it said that he enjoyed the film. Conversely, Vincent Canby of the New York Times dismissed the film as a low-grade Stephen King fiction, and thought the werewolf looked less like a wolf than a sm than smoky bear with a terrible hangover. Variety wrote, "Silver Bullet is a Stephen King film at with his script at uh, from his novella." Which may sell some tickets, with but without any regret regrets. The kids have a silver bullet. Only the only known power that will stop a werewolf. Unfortunately, there is no known power that will stop films like this. Rick Kogan of Chicago Tribune gave the film one star out of four and called it a limp retelling of the werewolf legend that is about as frightening as a rubbery Richard Nixon mask. Michael Wilmington of the Los Angeles Times wrote, The human drama gives Silver Bullet an extra warmth and Marty's handicap and Juventi make a film more attractive hero, but with the exception of one startling dream sequence, a church congregation in a mass vulpine metamorphosis, especially. Silver Bullet never really, surprised, never really surprises you. Paul at Atanasio of the Washington Post remarked that the plot is about as suspenseful as looking at your watch to see which minute will pop up next, but Gary Busey's live perform lively performance almost makes the movie bearable, especially. In retrospective review, Felix Vas Vasquez Jr. of Film Thread and Cinema Craze wrote Silver Bullet featured one of the best climaxes in a horror film thanks to director Daniel Attes and Garner's very entertaining and creepy story that develops beyond a typical werewolf movie, which I think a great horror film when I when I think of great horror films, when I think of a great werewolf films, and I when I think of a great Stephen King film, I think of this. Yeah, because the transformation well, this movie, Silver Bullet, was released on October 1985, particularly around the same time as The Goonies and Lady Hawk, because these movies came out in 1985. So that's going to be it for my movie review on Silver Bullet for today. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my thoughts on Silver Bullet. When I first watched C Silver Bullet for the first time, because I realized that this was based on Cycle of the Werewolf, which is the n novella by Stephen King, because of my movie review on The Shining, which it all has got to me with my review on Silver Bullet, I guess. Hope to subscribe for content. My anime pond link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter or Facebook. If you have a Twitter or Facebook account on all social media, be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking on the like button on this video. Feel free to leave in the comments comment section. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Ronin K95. Feel free to join my channel, especially on my channel. Hit the notifications bell button, and I got another movie review coming up. Stay tuned for my next movie review. I got another movie review from 2004, starting with my movie review on Van Helsing. Until next time.